Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive AV Club. Today we're going to be talking about Vegas Effect. And you might be thinking, what, you're in Vegas Pro 17? Exactly. That's where we need to start all of our Vegas Pro, uh, Vegas Effect, Vegas Post products. So just a quick rundown if you're new to this. Vegas Post is Vegas Image, Vegas Effect, and Vegas Pro 17 all together. Vegas Pro 17 is where you're going to be editing your project, the meat of it. But Vegas Effect is where you're going to do your special effects, mostly your 3D effects or your crazy uh, 3D text effects or things like that. So we are going to dive into Vegas Effects today, and it's mostly an intro. So if you're new to Vegas Effects or if you're new to Vegas Effects for this channel, this is kind of getting everybody on the same page. This is, this is just an overview of the software. We're not going to do anything really complex today, so it's really just for beginners stick around and we'll do lots more fun complex stuff later so here I have just a simple clip I want to import this into my editor now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna right click and hit edit in Vegas effect it will pull in no matter if you cut it or not it'll pull in the whole clip unless you've created a sub clip so uh, I have a whole video about creating sub clips but you can create a sub clip if you just want to pull a tiny piece in uh, of your clip if you have like a really long clip or something this is Vegas effect so quick overview this is your media this is your project window which is more like the event pan crop window in Vegas it's got a lot of tools directly on this window this is your effects library and it is very big this is where you can do some layout working and this is where your tracks will be when you've done tracking so we'll talk all about all of that as we go through the several videos we will not get to tracking today uh, this we'll talk about this panel in a second you'll see it populate soon but first off this is our media in the timeline if you delete the media you can simply add it back by grabbing this media right here and dropping it back into the timeline. If you want to shorten the media, you can either grab it on the left and trim it, or you can grab it on the right and trim it, or you can cut the media. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky and a bit different than what you're expecting. If you cut the media, it suddenly puts it into a different track because this is very tracked base. So now you have two clips and you want them in different tracks because that's just how the software thinks. So if you were planning on getting rid of this, you'll just delete the whole track and get rid of it. With your pointer tool, you can scrub through your footage. Up here, this top search and timeline section, this is where you scrub and where you select. So if you want a certain piece of footage, see, I want it to start there. There we go. And you can pop that right here at the beginning of your timeline there you are so now I have this little fast moving thing right there this is gonna be fun so the next thing I want to go over is your project window so when you have something selected and you select it up here you can actually move it around and this is like the event pan crop tool it moves the entire thing it can make it smaller it can make it wider it can make it bigger it can do all the stuff the event pan crop tool can do and it can rotate it and it can move left and right and over so I'm gonna hit control Z a ton right here because I do not want it to be that way but I just want you to know that this is where you can select different objects so not just your main media all the effects and stuff we're gonna drop in if there are any kind of 3d or 2d effect that actually has an existence up here then you can grab it and move it around this is how you grab and move around everything all together without ruining where it exists in the frame this is how you add text if you want to add text you can just boop hit this little button right here and then a text track appears it just writes text and then you can select so we talked about this being media this is tabs we can just select the text tab and then here you can do simple things like increase the size of your text or decrease the size of your text you'll have to have it highlighted for the changes to affect all of them uh, this is also color and type 
and things like that. So you can easily see how this could be helpful with all these moving and positioning and masking tools. So this next thing I'm going to do is delete the text track because I don't want it. Now, whatever this last thing you selected up here, well, you'll use again. So if you want, if you still have text selected, you'll be adding text again. And like I said, every time it clicks, it adds a new track. This is how Vegas Effects thinks. It thinks in tracks. So we're going to talk about these drop-down menus in a second. But every time you do something new, it's going to add a new track or a new layer. So maybe layer is the better word for these. So every single time you, you add a new text box, you're going to add a new text layer. So we're going to go ahead and delete those because I don't want them and I don't want to muddy this up for you. You can see all of those had a certain link too that you could cut down or cut and manipulate. So this is the masking tool. What's freaking sweet about this is you can like draw a hundred of them and it's awesome. And you can see down here in this drop down, this is where all of your effects or transforms, behaviors and audio stuff, whatever you're doing to the clip exists inside of it. It's kept track of inside of this track or your, or your layer here. It's all kept track of there. So whether you add a hundred little mask or a hundred little circle mask or whether you add uh, a special freeform mask where you manipulate and create a freeform mask, uh, it's all here and you can turn them on or, or you can inverse them. This is the masking inverse button. You can turn them on or off and you can delete them all right here inside of this track. Now I want you to notice something. Over here too, as this gets more complicated over here, your particularly selected track, all of its properties are over here. All the properties and stuff you can mess with. So this is also another place that you can grab and select and delete or manipulate. All these transforms and stuff we're doing up here, you can do here as well. And I want to show you something specific about it. Let's say opacity. So if you start at the end of the clip, the beginning of the clip, and you hit this radial button, it'll create a keyframe. If you move to the end of the clip there with that radial button selected, you can then do some sort of a change, right? And all I did was slide my mouse wheel left to right here, and it slides the change. You can also double click it and type in the number value if that's what you're looking for, but you know, it's easy enough just to slide your mouse. So now you guess what this is going to do. You guessed right. It's going to fade. Now to do that, I just hit space to play and space to pause, but you can also play and pause right here. You can move back to the start right here and you can frame through right here. This works. This kind of keyframing ability works for everything so what if I have this this it all works for everything temporally so you can move the keyframe around you can delete the keyframe with the delete key uh, but this anything with a radial button can be keyframed and that's why it has this little kind of darker track right here you can keyframe how this opacity the the transform effects so pretty much just everything you could do in event pan crop that we were talking about earlier all of that can be moved around here. So now you get to the plus buttons. This is adding a tracker, which we're not going to get into right now. This is adding effects, which could be anything that you can add here. But I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to exit out of that because you can also, I want to show you something. You can go to your effects tab right here. See these three tabs? You can go to your effects tab and grab anything you want or search for anything you want in this effects tab and drag it to the clip. Now, but not everything over here is going to appear inside of the timeline. There's two types of effects. There's the kind of where you're actually manipulating the actual image itself or the, the track itself, the, this layer, or you're actually adding a new layer to be manipulated. So things like 3D effects, like this bonfire, when we add it in a second, it's going to be a 3D effect that we're going to be manipulating. Uh, things like lights and flares are also like that. But uh, if you want to stylize it, like if we wanted to cartoonify it, you could just drag it over here and touch it on the clip and it actually adds as an effect. And this is, you can drop it down or you could drop it down over here, wherever you want to do it. And that will let you change everything, keyframe everything, all this stuff saturation, your brightness, you can add keyframes to all of it. 
when you're in layer, you're only you're seeing what this layer is, and you're only zooming in on a layer. But when you're in viewer, you're looking at the layer and the effects and everything. So now you can see the changes we were making. That's why you couldn't see them. It's because we were in the layer tab instead of the viewer tab. That's something important to note. So you can add these details and color. You can add. You can change the the size of the details, the threshold, and by which you add the effect. And there we go. We now have like a cartoony fied landscape. Um, I don't want this effect on here forever. I just wanted to show you that some effects are add directly to the media and that is one of those kinds of effects. So the other kind of effect is something that adds itself to the timeline. So if we look at Quick 3D, Bonfire, that's a good one. Let's throw this on here. We can always add a bonfire. It adds itself to the timeline. But you see the transforming here, but you can't see it at all. That's okay because just like in Vegas, the top is what's on top and the bottom is what's on bottom. If you just click and drag this to the top, now you can see it. So now we get a bonfire. This is going to be great. So just like the effects tab, you can actually manipulate everything about the bonfire right here with keyframes and transforms and everything else. So this can be, it's 3D. You can rotate it. You can uh, move it up and down. And you can rotate its uh, axis as well, like whether the fire's facing you or whether it's not facing you. And when we watch it, this is going to be a little jarring, but when you watch it, it's burning. It's burning and moving. How exciting. So uh, it's also longer than the uh, source media. So you can even cut it down. It's just like a video clip, and it'll lock and keyframe to the appropriate length. So now we've got a burning fire. It's got smoke and particles and everything else, and all that stuff can be affected. You can change the amount of space activity and spread and ferocity uh, we're gonna change the intensity and we're gonna make it extra intense actually no we're gonna lower the intensity just a smidge just to do it and like I said it's keyframeable we could have it get more intense over time so let's go ahead and do that let's let's make it all the way intense boom extremely intense there so you can have your fire spread you can have it despread you can make your fire bigger or smaller and if you keyframe it if you click this radial button to keyframe it it'll make it even bigger so now let's do something exciting with it so now let's actually put it somewhere in 3d space so i'm going to rotate it to where these little see these little side panels this is the rotations i'm going to rotate it straight up and down and this will be as we're passing by it'll have we'll have to rotate that but that's the anchor point there I'm gonna set it on this tree here right here at the base uh, it's a little the bonfire is actually meant to be a smaller kind of fire so there may be a better fire for this but I think this is a great little first show of the software uh, if a first little effect to and like I said, you can change everything about it. You can add more smoke. You can add more, change the color and the density and the thickness. You can make it look more realistic in the scene or less realistic. Whatever you're looking for, you can you can manipulate all that right there. And so this tutorial is not about exactly adding a bonfire to a tree. I just want to kind of complete an effect to show you the full cycle. So here we're going to do the transforming. And uh, right here at the beginning, I want to hit uh, position. I want to keyframe the position. And so as we move, and actually I'm going to go ahead and keyframe all of these things. As we move, we're going to be changing the rotation, the location, and even sometimes the size. So I'm going to move through a few frames, change the location, the rotation, move through a few more frames, change the location, the 
the rotation, keeping it where I want it to be. And you can see here it's actually drawing a little line, and this line is where it travels through time. And the more, whoopsie, sometimes you can grab the wrong media, so be wary of that. Uh, the more you, you spend doing it, the time you spend doing it, the better it's going to look. Because if unless you're doing motion tracking, the, you're, the more keyframes, the more exact it's going to be. And then you can see it's getting more intense, just like we told it to earlier. And then I'm going to put this here. I'm going to change the rotation again because it's like we're looking back at it. And um, there we go. So this should track with the tree reasonably well. So let's start at this, this one right here. We didn't start it perfectly at the beginning. So there we go. Now that should track with the tree pretty closely. And it actually looks like it's getting bigger and flamier. And one thing I want to do, here's a quick little thing we can do. We can change the opacity here at the very beginning. Um, we can leave, put that at half. And now let's watch it burn. So there, now we have a very quick and easy burning effect. There's a hundred things I would do to make this look more realistic. Uh, changing the color of the fire, um, adding some ambient brightnesses and darknesses to uh, make this fire seem like it's casting light around it. Layer after layer, things you could do to really improve the realisticness. Uh, but just for a quick tutorial effect, you understand the software now. That's how it works. This is Vegas Effect. Now let's render it out. So we got what we want. We're going to go to File and we're going to go to Export. And we're going to name this, we're going to call it Fire Tree MP4 Save. And then it's going to just go ahead and start rendering out what we have as a preset. So I have mine preset as YouTube 1080p. There are all sorts of presets you can select. If you do not have what you want exactly, an unpressed AVI is a great idea. Uh, I'm fine with an MP4, this YouTube one, because it's going to match my final settings uh, for YouTube, but this uh, uncompressed is always a great option. So um, let's go ahead and let's look at this video right here. There we go. We got the tree burning and tracking pretty well just for the, the amount of time we spent on that, tracking pretty well. So it's, it's got a lot of black behind it, and that is... Um, simply because we actually had all of this highlighted. So in the future, that's something that's something I definitely want to note. You can grab your clip, move it back into Vegas, and put it where you want it to go. So let me know the kinds of things you want to see, and we'll get started on them. I've already got a few in mind to get going with. But now that we've introduced the software, I feel much more comfortable about jumping in and learning effects together. Thanks for watching. This has been Adam with Tech Dive AV Club. we got all sorts of Vegas tutorials and Move Studio tutorials if you're new around here, and now Vegas Effect tutorials, and really just production tutorials. So if you're into making videos, this is a place I think you're going to like. Thanks for watching. Anything you buy through my affiliate links helps me out. I'll see you next time.